Last time out we revisited FIFA 10 career mode and I asked you to let me know in the comments section if there were any other older games that you wanted me to take a look at. A number of you suggested FIFA 15 and to be completely honest it's probably one of my favourite FIFA titles of all time so I'm definitely more than happy to give this game another go. Apologies to the guy that wanted to see me play it on the 3DS though, I wasn't even aware that it was released on that console if I'm honest. Anyway though, so today we'll be taking a look at the features of FIFA 15 career mode, playing through some gameplay and just generally having a look at what FIFA 15 career mode had to offer. And if there are any other games that you want to see me play then be sure to let me know in the comments section down below and I'll see what I can do. I do read absolutely every single comment that's left for me so if you do leave me a comment it will be seen and you may just see your idea featured on the channel in the not too distant future. The last video has received over 2,500 likes so if we can hit that target again then that would honestly be absolutely amazing and if you are new to the channel and you want to see more videos from me in the future then please do stick around and subscribe. Messi was the main man back in FIFA 15, Piemonte Calcio thankfully weren't yet a thing but how did career mode handle? That's what we'll be taking a look at today. Before we get into that though, I just want to say a massive thank you to OneFootball for sponsoring today's video. The OneFootball app is available for both iOS and Android, and through the app you can follow all of your favourite clubs, competitions and players, receiving the latest news and updates as and when they happen. The app covers over 100 different leagues and competitions all around the world, so whatever clubs or competitions you're looking to stay up to date with, the OneFootball app should have you covered. There's plenty of action to keep up with over the festive period, the FA Cup third round is coming up at the start of January and there will of course be plenty of transfer news and rumours to take in over the course of the next month or so too. I've been using OneFootball for the past couple of years now, I use the app pretty much every day and personally I find it to be incredibly useful for staying up to date with all of the latest news and action. As I said before, the OneFootball app covers plenty of different leagues and competitions all throughout the world and the great news is that it's completely free to download. So if you haven't already got it installed on your phone then there's no real reason not to at least try it out. There'll be a link to the app in the description down below and I highly recommend checking it out and giving the app a go. Massive thanks to them once again for sponsoring today's video. Let's get into it though and let's take a look at what FIFA 15 career mode has to offer. Right then, so my team of choice is going to be Real Madrid. Some of you may remember if you're absolute OGs but I did a series with Real Madrid in FIFA 15 career mode. Had a lot of fun with it. And for today's video, we're going to be revisiting it. We're going to play FIFA 15 career mode with Real Madrid and hopefully we'll have a lot of fun. Customization options weren't exactly the best back in FIFA 15. We could choose a tracksuit, a suit or a shirt and tie. We could have it grey or navy, no other colours whatsoever. And then we can choose our skin tone, not too many options once again, and body type regular, stocky or slim. And if you've played career mode at all in the last five years then this menu setup will no doubt look very familiar because quite honestly very little has changed. We've got the central page, squad, transfers, office and season. Five different menus exactly the same as FIFA 20. Unfortunately though player training wasn't introduced until FIFA 16 so not much has changed but we do at least have player training now. We have done since FIFA 16 and that is the biggest change quite honestly in the last five games. We do however have the ability to ask for additional funds, that's something that we don't have in the current games, haven't had that for a few years now, I believe FIFA 16 might have been the last game to have it, maybe FIFA 17, can't quite remember exactly which one it was but yeah we don't have it anymore, we did have it back in FIFA 15 and in my opinion it was a very good feature so yeah, let's try our luck and see if we can get an extra 50 million. Apparently asking for an extra 50 million on your first day on the job doesn't go down too well though. They're not going to give it to me. They've not yet seen enough of me at the club. And to be completely honest with you, that doesn't surprise me in the least bit. Like I say, I've literally just taken the job and ask them for 50 million, I'd probably tell me to go away too. We do have 92 million to play with regardless though, so let's see what we can do with it. From the thumbnail, you no doubt know exactly what I'm going to try and do with it. I'm going to try and sign up Lionel Messi, 80 million plus Karim Benzema. Let's see what they say. 80 million wasn't enough apparently, but if we up it to 86 million, they will be willing to do business with us, so... Yeah, let's do it. He's currently on 450k a week at Barcelona, so I'm going to offer him an extra 100 grand a week. Also give him a 20% goal bonus, three-year contract, crucial first-team player. Let's see what he says. He said no, he loves his current club and he therefore doesn't want to leave, which in these older games basically just means that they want more money, so 
We previously offered him 550k a week. This time, let's up it by 50k and let's offer him 600 grand a week. What do you say, Messi? He's still saying no. Great. More money it is then. And if we sell off Pepe to Chelsea, then that gives us a bit of extra money to play with. So sorry, Pepe, you're a club legend, but we got to get rid of you. We want to bring in Messi, so we got to make sacrifices, unfortunately. And with Pepe out of the door, we can now offer Messi 750k a week. In fact, we've got 110k left to play with. So if he says no, we've still got a bit of leeway and hopefully we'll be able to bring in Lionel Messi. Messi still wants more money. So this time we're offering him 800 grand a week. And just in case we need even more money to persuade Messi to come here, we're sending off Contral to Borussia Mönchengladbach. Apparently Sergio Aguza wants game time now. Mate, I have absolutely no idea who you even even are. You're 63 rated mate, get a grip. There's no chance whatsoever that you're going to be getting any game time. We've got some absolutely incredible news come through though. Lionel Messi has agreed a contract, 800 grand a week, Benzema is heading in the opposite direction and Lionel Messi is joining Real Madrid. Welcome to the club. Time to get into some gameplay now and we're taking on Atletico Madrid in the Spanish Super Cup. Varane has the body type of Slenderman apparently and we're having to wear our away kits because every single one of Atletico Madrid's kits clashes with our home kit so that's just brilliant but anyway let's get into it and may the best team win. Given that Bale is a fitness concern and Sergio Ramos is completely ruled out for injury though I'm guessing that the best team is probably going to be Atletico Madrid especially as it's on legendary difficulty and from what I can remember legendary used to be a struggle even when I used to play this game all the time so yeah this could be quite tough also the pace of the game is completely different to what I'm used to it's so fast paced and at the moment I'm struggling they got a ball over and Oh, I thought I was going to concede already then. Here they come once again, working the ball into the box. They've crossed it over and we dealt with it just about. No, we haven't. Yes, we have. It's all good. James is on the ball now. What can we do with this one? Can we counter them? Can we get a goal on the break? That would be absolutely amazing. James has got it back. Takes on his man. Come on, mate. Let's get an early goal. That's just bounced off his knee. That's not exactly what I was looking for. Mandzukic heads it on towards Griezmann. I've tried to defend that and my defender was facing the wrong direction. And I'm pretty sure the keeper was too. They've taken the lead. Everything went wrong there. And I don't entirely know what just happened. Let's take another look at this one on the replay. I tried to get a tackle in. And then what is the keeper doing? He's not even facing Griezmann. That is shocking. Carvajal moves it inside to Luka Modric. He plays it on to Marcelo, who plays it back to Luka Modric. Let's work some here. James is going to play that through to Lionel Messi, and that's a big save from the keeper. Mandzukic is on it, and Mandzukic has found the corner. It's now 2-0 to Atletico Madrid. I knew this wasn't going to be easy, but I'm just getting absolutely destroyed at the moment. I'm finding the AI incredibly unpredictable in this game, and once again, Casillas has let me down there, I feel. He didn't dive until far too late, and... By the time he dived, the ball was already in the back of the net. So, yeah, not the best goalkeeping in the world, mate. Corner kick to come now then. James Rodriguez is going to launch this one over for Gareth Bale. And, oh, that was so close. Let's basically try and do the exact same thing once again. James crosses it over. This time it doesn't work out quite so well, though. But it does drop for Marcelo. He's going to bang one into the top corner. What a hit. We're going to have to take another look at this one on the replay. That is one of the best goals I've scored in a long time. Marcelo absolutely thunders it into the top corner. The keeper had no chance there whatsoever. And we got a goal back just before half time. It's now 2 1, and there's everything still to play for in the second half. So we're 2 1 down at the break, and so far, Atletico Madrid have only had two shots on target. The first one, Casillas was looking the wrong direction. The second one, he dived after the ball was already in the back of the net. So, yeah, so far. I've not really been too impressed with him. And I also wasn't really too impressed with Cristiano Ronaldo. We had him out on the wing in that first half and he was fairly anonymous. So putting him up top for the second half, Messi's playing just behind him and hopefully the pair of them can do some serious damage. So yeah, let's get into the second half and let's see if we can turn this one around. James Rodriguez is on the corner once again. We've done pretty well from corners so far, so I'm feeling fairly confident and... Yeah, that was terrible. And now they've scored once again. I was struggling at the back, wasn't quite sure what to do, and they've capitalised on the situation. They smashed it into the back of the net, and once again, they got a two-goal lead. It's really not been my day. Juan Fran sprinting down the wing. I'm trying to chase him down with Luka Modric. He's whipped that one across. We're going to deal with it. No, we're not. Mandzukic has found the back of the net. It's 4-1 to Atletico Madrid. 
it's game over. I only allowed them two shots in that second half, which I don't think is too bad, but they scored both of them and they've won the game 4-1, so... Yeah, not the best result in the world. At least we scored an absolute banger though with Marcelo and we got something to show for the situation. We were completely destroyed, but we did score a wonder goal. And after the absolute destruction of that first leg, I don't think there's really too much point in playing this second one, so let's just sim it. And we've picked up a 1-1 draw, so... Yeah, progress. And as if we've not been humiliated enough already, we've now got to take on Atletico Madrid once again in the first league game of the season. We're going to wear the home kit for this one. We'll also put them in their home strip and hopefully it won't be too much of a clash. And it's probably fairly obvious why I've done this, but I've dropped the difficulty down from legendary to world class. So yeah, hopefully this time we won't get absolutely annihilated and we might stand half a chance. Carvajal is going to move this one out wide to Gareth Bale. He looks down the line to Tony Kroos, turns it back, does a nice little fake shot. Plays it back to Gareth Bale. He's looking for support. Moves it over to Luka Modric. Can we work something here? James Rodriguez is on it. That's a horrible shot. Okay, maybe not then. He's found the top corner. I thought he'd absolutely ballooned it for a second. I went for the finesse shot. Looked like it was going to keep rising, but no. Came back down again, and that is a beautiful goal right there. Look, from the way it was travelling, I thought it was just going to keep rising into the stand, but nope. Beautiful goal. Finds the top corner. And it's now 1-0 to Real Madrid. What an effort from James Rodriguez. And we just keep scoring absolute bangers. Don't let him score here, lads. So we've only just taken the lead. They've gone through with Mario Mandzukic and he's found the corner of the net. It's now 1-1 and I'm honestly feeling seriously deflated. I thought we had a chance here, but we've instantly thrown away the lead. And it's all gone horribly wrong. Straight from kickoff. They've taken it right through our defence. I didn't defend that at all well, and they've taken full advantage. Tony Kroos plays it through to James Rodriguez, who finds Cristiano Ronaldo, and he's taken out someone in the crowd with that one. Terrible shot. And I can't help but feel that the only reason they're showing a replay of that is to mock me about how terrible that was. They've not really done too much in that first half. They only had one shot. They did score it, though, and as it stands... The score is completely level. Anyway though, let's get into the second half and let's hope that they don't take another shot because if they do, it's probably going to find the back of the net. They seem to be resorting to absolute hoofball tactics at this point. Jimenez is on it, launches it long and he launches it straight to Casillas. Not great from Atletico Madrid at the moment. Let's try and kick off a counter-attack. That was a bit dodgy. Carvajal's got hold of it now though. Working it down the right wing. Cristiano Ronaldo's making a good run here. Can we make the most of the situation? Ronaldo's got it down the wing, turns it inside. Let's do a rainbow flick. That is one of the worst skill moves of all time. I was trying to potentially win a penalty, but didn't really work out. Come on, boys. Bale's on it, plays that forward to Cristiano Ronaldo. He moves it through to Lionel Messi. And they've got such a deep defensive line. We're just getting bullied at the moment. They've got so many players behind the ball, and I'm struggling. Let's bring on Hernandez and Isco and see if they can make a difference. Modric is on it, plays that one through to Messi. He moves it on to Javier Hernandez, and they've just broken it down again. I just can't get through their defence. We're quickly running out of time, and quite honestly, I don't really know what to do. Let's go down the wing. We've tried going through the middle. It hasn't worked out. Let's just whip it across, see what happens. Hernandez! It's found the back of the net. It's now 2-1. It didn't work going through the middle, so I thought I'd try crossing it in. And that has worked out beautifully. 90th minute, and he's bagged himself a goal. We brought him on as a substitute with about 10 minutes left to play. And he has definitely made a difference. Incredible cross there from Marcelo. Hernandez meets it with a beautiful header. And that is probably going to seal the deal. It's going to be a 2-1 win for Real Madrid. So that's been FIFA 15 career mode and it's honestly been a lot of fun to play. Obviously I had to drop the difficulty down from legendary to world class because I was getting absolutely destroyed but I'd rather that than the situation with the current games where you stick it on ultimate difficulty, you crank the sliders right up and you're still smashing teams left, right and centre. It's just not enjoyable. Obviously the pace of the game was completely different and that was part of the struggle but in addition to that, AI controlled players were incredibly unpredictable and it just provided a breath of fresh air in all honesty. Anyway though, thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, leave it a like if you have done, have an awesome day and I'll catch you again next time.